Hi, I'd like to show you a, a simple test that I learned about recently um, for testing the purity of your alkali. And what I mean by alkali is the sodium hydroxide uh, granular flakes or pellets or beads that you're using to make your bar soap <clears throat> or your flake um, sodium, potassium hydroxide, which you'd use to make um, a lot of soft soaps and liquid soaps. Um, one of the concerns that people have is, is my lye pure enough? And if I have a soap failure, um, could it be that my lye is, is, um, has lost its purity? And lye can, over time, lose its purity by absorbing water from the open air or reacting with carbon dioxide. And this happens to both KOH and NiOH, so it's always something to be concerned about. My sodium hydroxide, it comes in a bead form. Um, and I also make liquid soaps, so I use um, potassium hydroxide, or KOH, also from the Lye Guy in New York State, um, and it comes in the form of kind of a, of a flake. I want to know, in either case, whether my lye is, is pure enough. Um, so the Kevin Dunn, when he did his um, a presentation recently, he gave a kind of a simple, easy method to um, test for your alkali purity, and that's what I'd like to show you today. In addition to the, the lye, whichever one you're going to use, or your alkali more, more properly, um, also needs some distilled water. So I have some from Walmart. You need to have anhydrous citric acid, and I will give a, a um, method for making sure your citric acid is anhydrous, meaning water-free. It's just the citric acid, no extra water um, on it. In addition to that, you also need the infamous phenolphthalein indicator solution. Um, you can buy this at various um, places, uh, generally like a brewing supply um, would carry this kind of product. Um, you can also buy it online. As far as equipment goes, I'm using a pint canning jar. It needs to be a clear glass jar. I know we're working with lye, but trust me on this, you need a clear glass jar. I'm going to have use a couple spoons, one for spooning out my citric acid and one spoon for spooning out my alkali. Calculator and pencil, piece of paper to write things down on, and also some kind of a white surface. You need to be able to find out when the phenolphthalein turns from a clear solution to a pink solution, and we're looking for the faintest change from clear to pink. Um, in addition to that, you're going to need a, a decent scale. Now mine's a, a secondhand um, lab scale, so it reads out to, to two to uh, hundredths of a gram. If you only have a scale that reads out to tenths of a gram, that will probably be accurate enough. But if you have a scale that only reads to whole grams, just 358 instead of 358.7, um, then you're going to want to get a more accurate scale. Um, or just accept the fact that you're going to get just a rough idea of your purity. The next thing would be to turn on your scale and, and tear it, meaning make sure it says zero. I'm going to put my um, uh, jar on top of the, the scale. It, it's about 246 grams. I'm going to re-zero it again so that it turns back to zero. So if I say tear it, that's what I mean is to make it say zero. And then at this point, I'm going to add about 100 grams of distilled water. It doesn't have to be accurate, just close. It says 105.76 grams. Now I'm going to take my phenolphthalein solution, and I'm going to put about three drops in it. And when I say about, that's really all I mean, is about three. I'm going to swirl this. I'm not going to use a spoon or a chopstick or anything to mix my solutions because I don't want to introduce any more error than absolutely necessary. So as you can see, the distilled water doesn't show any kind of color of pink against this white background. It looks perfectly clear, which is exactly what I would expect. The next thing I'm going to do is re-zero or tear my scale one more time so it says zeros. And I'm going to add about 10 grams of citric acid. So I'm going to measure that in. Okay, there we go. There's the weight that I have, 10.07 grams. I'm going to uh, swirl this to mix it. But it does stay a little bit cloudy. Um, but I'm going to swirl it for a while until I don't see any obvious little um, residue of the solids at the bottom. And it takes maybe 30 seconds to do that. 
Now, I'm going to tear or zero my scale again. And in this particular case, since most people use sodium hydroxide, I'm going to use um, the solid sodium hydroxide from this jar. I happen to know from some of the information that I have that I have to add about 6.2 grams of sodium hydroxide. Then I need to slow down because I'm going to edge up and add just a tiny little bit of, of sodium hydroxide, swirl and check, a little bit more, swirl and check, a little bit more, swirl and check, until I get this solution to turn barely pink. Not a lot pink, just a little bit pink. So let's just try it and see. If I'm wrong, I have to get to do this all over again. But if I'm right, it'll save me some time. I'm going to add 6.2 grams of sodium hydroxide directly to this citric acid solution. In fact, I'm going to do this over, this, over the um, sink, just in case I spill. You can see I've got gloves on because I am working with lye and I don't want to get burned. I'm um, going to just check this. And you can see against my white sink that this doesn't look very pink, which is a good thing. But now, as some of this lye is beginning to dissolve, can you see the color shift as I've been swirling? It's not clear anymore, a cloudy, white cloudy, it's pink cloudy. So let's check and see what the weight is. 6.67. I overshot my first amount of sodium hydroxide, but I got pretty close. Based on Kevin Dunn's um, formula he gave, he said that the sodium hydroxide purity of the sodium hydroxide in my bottle is equal to 62.46 times the grams of anhydrous citric acid I used, which was 10.07 grams, and divided by the grams of sodium hydroxide I actually added to the water to turn it faintly pink and that was 6.65. And I have about 94.8% pure sodium hydroxide. 